the Omega Beam. Full power. Welcome to the Omega Beam. I'm your host, Oren Merton. You know that Marvel has used its collection of comics to create the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And so far, the MCU has consisted of both movies and Disney Plus TV shows. Well, Marvel Studios has expanded their offerings to include specials. In this episode, we discuss the first such special called Werewolf by Night, which Disney Plus released as, quote, a Marvel Studios special presentation. It's about an hour long, and if you haven't heard of it, don't worry. We stay spoiler-free for most of our discussion and give ample warnings before we go into spoilers. Let's go to it. I am here with Golden to talk about the Disney Plus Marvel special presentation called Werewolf by Night. I'm not into horror. I don't know what comic this came from. I knew one of the creatures in it from comics, but I didn't know any of the others. I didn't know anything about it. And I was interested because it's Marvel. And, and we, we didn't watch it right away. Yeah, so there could didn't. have been many spoilers. Right. And I think we were we happened to make sure to avoid all of them. Right. I ended up hitting on one of them just because oh, of no. the title of an article. But I hadn't read this creature particularly. So I knew of it. But other than that, I knew nothing. And it was one of those things where I think we have enough of a general sense that the Marvel stuff is all quality that we were interested. And it was black and white. So that made it interesting too. I read that it was black and white so they could get away with more gore than they could get away with in the normal Marvel stuff. I like the splash of color. Yeah, yeah. I it, was... it was an it definitely we knew going in that this was going to be a very high production quality even if we had no idea what the story was about. Plus just on a personal interest note, I think we both were kind of curious about the fact that the director of Werewolf by Night is Michael Giacchino, who is a wonderful composer. He's composed the soundtracks to many of our favorite movies, including Marvel movies. He did Doctor Strange, among others. And that is interesting. A composer directing kind of Marvel horror. I mean, that's, that's kind of an interesting twist. Plus, you know, I had read that even though it's horror and even though it's gory, it was still more gory in like a PG-15 way, that it wasn't like super hard R or anything like that. So I figured, all right, let's watch it. So we watched it. And it, they wanted to go for like an old film yeah. style. And I think they very much achieved that. And part of that was going to the black and white yeah. and just making it seem like these are actual film reels. Yeah, they did it in a great way too. And... You know, like a lot of, I think, things we've seen where they really make it the style they're going for really obvious so you know what's going on. So literally the open credits, like you said, were a film reel. We're a black and white film reel. So we're supposed to get the idea that that's this kind of, that's the kind of, of show we're watching. That we're watching like an old 50s horror movie. And that this is still the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And somehow this is going to help tie in the supernatural creatures or non-inhumans. Right. Well, keep it spoiler-free for a little while. As someone who this isn't my normal wheelhouse, I found it captivating. And I really did enjoy it. And I think it was, it was well-directed by composer Michael Giacchino. He, he captured that suspense feeling and that kind of old school. I want to really specify that this is like watching a 50s movie. If you're expecting like kind of what I call torture porn horror of the modern Saw movies or any of that, no, this is not that at all. This is horror in the way that the old, you know, werewolf movies or mummy movies or, you know, Dracula movies were in the 50s and 60s. But he did a really good job, you know, calling back to those movies, paying homage to those movies without being so beholden to those kind of movies that they couldn't be modern as well. And I thought he did a really, really good job in telling this story. The basic story, without any spoilers, is that a monster hunter has died and this is his funeral. So that's... Well, it's who's going to... Who's going to... Yeah 
take over because he has what's called he has the bloodstone right and in order to earn the right to carry the bloodstone you have to prove that you're the best and it would actually go to his i think it was his daughter right they're not i guess on be- they weren't on the best terms right when they he passed. Have, they had some kind of un- undiscussed falling out but she's obviously on the outs so it turns into this really exciting, you know, I, I, I understand why it was a standalone thing, because it is kind of this standalone, you and know, I guess, bottle uh, episode. According to IMDb trivia, it's been in development since 2001. Really? Yes. Took okay. a little while to I get to the screen. I thought that was screen. interesting, and we also, I don't think either one of us noticed at the very beginning when they're going through the hall, when she's with her stepmother or mother-in-law, or Step, stepmother? Yeah, something like something that, like yeah. That. Her mother figure. There right. I guess Gore the God Butcher is on the wall. Oh. There's an image of him. Oh, how I about that? That was interesting. Yeah, I missed that. So if you've got Disney Plus and you you like that kind of hammer horror, 50s horror, you know, old universal monster type movie, this is a really exciting, well done modern version of it and you don't need to know anything about the marvel no, but, universe um, there's a lot of callbacks to comics yeah yeah actual comics comic characters and comic actual comics from different different decades right I, and i'm very specifically not talking about the one creature that was a spoiler we'll go into that in the spoiler section but so for those of you who don't know anything about it you can go in completely completely clean and and just be surprised and amused and and enthralled and delighted if these were old comics that you read but yeah i mean you you get you get the feeling that this is the labor of love by the people who put it together and they put it together real well and that this isn't this was not a chapter in the ongoing story that this was a kind of thing where they really wanted to to the production team really wanted to explore this corner of the comics and the MCU and stuff that they loved. And they made a nice little hour of entertainment that, that they, they really loved and they really believed in and they did a great job. Stepmother. Stepmother. There we go. Because of course it would be a stepmother. It would be. That's a very fairy tale fable fiction type thing to have is the evil stepmother. So, yeah, if you were wondering if this is worth seeing, it is worth seeing. If you're wondering about the production values, they are amazing. If you're wondering about the level of gore and horror... It, some, it as is some, severe. It's, it's all there, but it's not gross in the sense that me, someone who doesn't like modern gross-out horror, was able to watch it I and enjoy it. I guess the director it. expected it to be a mature rating, and it was TV-14. Yeah. But yet, I think Australia gave it a... A more mature rating. Yeah, I mean, I, to me, one of the best ratings I've ever seen, one of, or best in the sense that, to me, most accurate, was in the Netflix Punisher series. They, they gave it a TV-15 rating, which I thought was really appropriate, because it wasn't, you know, gory like a hard R movie, but it was a lot bloodier than you would get in just a PG-13 movie or a television show on primetime. So I would consider, personally, I would consider this, Werewolf by Night, to be PG-15, or, you know, MA-15, PG-15. 14. They, they, yeah. they rated it 14. Yeah. I would rate it 15. It would just be mature. Yeah. I mean, it's not... If you're sensitive, if you're really sensitive to blood, then obviously this is not for you. But... If you're okay with blood, as long as it's not like opened bodies and viscera everywhere and stuff like that, this is not that. And like we said, it is black and white, so it's it doesn't... Well, there is at one point, and you know, IMDb Trivia reminded me about this, that it does change the color. Oh yeah, I was going to go into and that in the spoiler section. Do you know what song is playing? I did at the time, because I remember I pointed it out to you, but I don't recall at the moment. Well, what other movies go from black and white to color? Wizard of Oz? Yeah. Somewhere okay. over the rainbow. Right, okay. I did remember, and I did point that out at the time. But yeah, it's been a while since we watched it. So yeah, I think this is it for the, the spoiler-free section. There's not a ton of spoilers you want to get into, but three, two, one spoilers. So 
I knew who Man Thing was because I'd certainly seen the name in comics. I kind of, I knew that it was number one, their kind of Swamp Thing, but also M Marvel's Swamp Thing, but also number two, kind of Cthulhu-ish in its design. And I had read a title that said, you know, Werewolf by Night introduces Man Thing. And, you know, I didn't read the article, but the title itself was full of spoilers. So I already knew that going in. I think they did a spectacular job with making it look both horrifying in the sense that you could imagine this thing doing massive amounts of harm, but also inviting. And, you know, what was his name? Ted? Ted. Yeah. That it's just Ted. Hi, I'm Ted. So I thought they did a really good job with it. I thought the two leads were really, really good. I think everybody has pointed out online, but I pointed it out when we watched it. The woman that they got to portray the female protagonist, the daughter, she seemed at first, at least, like a dead ringer to Elsa? Kristen. Yeah, seemed like a dead ringer for Kristen Ritter, who plays Jessica Jones. And it was like, oh my God, did they get the same actress? But no, just someone who looks similar. Yeah, Laura Donnelly is from, a lot of people know her from Outlander. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah, I, I mean, they got a great cast. The story was really well done. It, like, hints at the pulpiness, while at the same time, the more sort of modernness of the MCU and, the, and, and all of that. And I thought it was done really well. And I thought when it did go full color at the end, it was earned. It was a lot of fun. It was like, we had our pulp adventure, and now these are just two characters in the MCU, and so it's color. And I really liked that. I thought that was a nice way of, of, of splitting it to the pulp story and the MCU. I thought that was done really well and, and thoughtfully. It was just, it's a fun little romp yeah. into another branch of the MCU that's not what you necessarily expect it to be. Exactly. And, and I also think this kind of creates a, a, what I think is a really nice precedent. Not everything needs to be a series. Not everything needs to be a full-length movie. They had, you know, Michael Giacchino, the people who put it together, the production team, they had a story they wanted to tell, a style they wanted to tell it in. And it was basically like a one-hour standalone episode. And that's all it needed to be. It didn't feel short. It didn't feel like something was cut out. It was exactly the length it needed to be. And it was great that it was standalone. You can raise the question, who are the real monsters? Right, right. Who are the real monsters? The monster hunters or the, or the monsters, quote unquote monsters. It was a wonderful little thing. I'm glad they did it. I'm, I'm glad that they were after, wow, 12 years of development almost. I'm glad they were able to... 12? 11 from 2001 yeah. oh 21 yeah 21, yeah, 21 years of development Boy, you transpose math, your digits num numbers are scary math is hard but i'm glad they were able to get this thing going did does it tell you was it like michael giacchino from the beginning or was it just other it, people that, and... it just said that it was that was just one of the trivia oh, okay so obviously some people wanted to put this together for a very long time and i'm glad they did they managed to to walk that line where people like me who, who aren't into horror could really enjoy this. While, I, you know, from what I've read, people who are into horror were also really into it. They, you know, it's not as gory as, as the stuff that they love the most, but they also got into it. So that's not an easy line to walk, but I think they did. Well, thank you, Golden. You're welcome. And that's it for this episode. You can find the show notes at theomegabeam.com slash 191. If you liked this episode, please leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts. Your reviews help people who like this stuff find our podcast. If you have any comments or suggestions, please drop us a line at info at theomegabeam.com. Be good to yourselves and each other, and we'll catch you next time. The Omega Beam. The Omega Beam. Full stop.